Hello everyone, this is Wenting. Sorry for the long wait, but here is a follow-on video after my previous attempt on building a full-frame CCD camera. Because it's too long ago, I will restart with an introduction of the project. Basically, this is a DIY camera that I built myself during my free time. More specifically, this is a DIY full-frame interchangeable lens mirrorless camera. The main sensor chips and the screen off the shelf parts, I cannot really build them myself anyway. Everything else is self-designed and custom-made. So let's assemble it together and talk about its design. First of all, a huge thank you to my friends for helping me design and make this camera. Starting from the grip, it has four structural components, three of which are SRA 3D printed and the other one is CNC aluminum. Though it's probably a good idea to replace it with sheet metal for better strength and lower cost, the bottoms, steels, and shoulder screen are all installed on a custom FPC cable. As there aren't many components on it, the cable is hand assembled. Once assembled, it can be screwed onto the grip base part. I messed up the screw hole, so I had to tape on the lower part of the flex cable. Next step is this connection part. It's screwed onto both the base and the back piece of the grip. I'm only installing the base part for now. Next step is installing the main body of the camera. The grip will be finished a bit later. Starting with the front case, it needs to be screwed onto the connection piece. Coming up is the I.O. board. There are a fairly large amount of components on the board, so I'm using the Lumen PMP open source pick and place machine to assemble it. This board features a power only USB port, a JTAG port for debugging, a flash synchronization terminal, a power button, and the SD card slot. Other than providing the interface, the board also features most of the power supply circuits. Pogo pins for the active lens mount are on the back of the board. They fit into a 3D printed piece from the IO sub-assembly. I applied some additional heat conducting silicon before installing into the front case, but the right way to do it should be improving the efficiency of the circuit to eliminate the need for this. Once properly installed, I use three hex pillars to fasten the board. Connecting the flex cable to the grip. It's time to program the firmware of the baseboard. Now we can come back and finish the installation of the grip. First of all, the battery. It's the same as the previous design of using two 18650 battery packed in parallel. There are off-the-shelf modules available, but it's also possible to pack your own. Here, my friend is helping me making a custom-made battery pack with a DIY welding machine. However, going forward, I'm considering using existing camera batteries. They are easier to buy and easier to replace. And to be honest, the order of installation is quite strange right now. The batteries should be installed last. Back to the installation, 
insert the battery into the grip board. I put a handle on the battery to make it easier to take out it later. Once the battery is installed, now we are ready to finish the grip assembly. First is the shutter and the function keys. I designed it like a cat paw. Next we have the dial button and more functional keys. Put them on the back shelf first, then snap them on all together. And finally, we install the screws. Now the grip is installed. Coming back to install the main body. Next up is the main board. The main board integrates most of the core components of the camera. We can take a look at the signal chain. First of all, the light passes through the lens and enters the sensor. The sensor converts light signal into an electrical signal. The signal is amplified, sampled, and processed. The image is then presented on the screen or saved in the memory card. The sensor, amplification, sampling, processing, and the control of the screen and memory card are all on this board. The sensor used is Codex KI1102 CD sensor, which is available in color and monochrome. ADA4000 was used for signal amplification. The same AD9090 is used again for the analog to digital conversion. The main processor used is the Think 7010 ARM plus FPGA system chip with external DDR3 cache. This board also hosts a large number of CCD clock driving circuits. From the driving point of view, a CCD is like a huge capacitor. The driver needs to be able to charge and discharge the capacitor quickly. It's quite demanding on the driver. Back to installation, first of all, put the heatsink on the back of the board. Put on the thermal pads and then install the CCD. I'm using mid-mount connector here, which helps reduce overall thickness. Now, the sensor board subassembly is finished. Back to the main assembly. Install the cable. The infrared cut filter pre-installed on 3D printed frame. Of course, if you don't want the infrared cut filter, just don't install it. Put on the board and install the screws. Additional thin spacers may be added here to help calibrate the focal plane. Continuing up is the installation of the back shell. The back shell is printed using FDM instead of SRA, like the handle. The screen is a 3.4 inch 480x480 resolution 1000 nits IPS LCD with MIPI DSI interface. First, the cable goes through the openings on the back shell. Push the screen into the slot. The next step is to install the acrylic panel. One issue with the acrylic panel is, is the reflection, making it potentially hard to see outdoors.
Turning to the front, I haven't installed the lens mount yet. Putting a small spring, lens release button, three custom made spring for the lens mount, Bayonet ring Four screws And I'm done Because I use a different processor this time, and there has been quite a large architectural change, I basically had to rewrite all the software from scratch. For the FPGA, I ended up writing most of the components myself. This sometimes allows lower resources usage compared to off-the-shelf IPs. In terms of software, basically except for setting the ISO, shutter speed, and taking photos, there is nothing else. Honestly, I just got it sort of working recently. There is still tons of work to do, such as improving live view speed, implementing the live view zoom, and so on. And finally, let's take a look at this, at best, an early prototype. This video doesn't contain much technical details, it's just to show you how it assembled. So let's just take a look at the not-so-beautiful sample photos and listen to me ramble about this project. This project is the most time-consuming project I've ever done and at the same time, it's really hard to mass produce it and profit from it. Just sounds like a bad deal. So why did I do this project? The reason is mostly just for fun. I've been into photography and electronics DIY for a while, so I just thought it would be fun if I can make my own camera. Don't get me wrong, I don't have any problem with my existing camera, and there is really no need to build my own. It's just for fun. But you know, there is no way I can do everything perfectly, actually far from it. So you will see me cutting corners here and there to make it simpler to do. Most design choices are easier for fun or for simplicity. So let's start with the rather controversial system architecture and sensor choice. First of all, why not just use a Raspberry Pi with a Raspberry Pi camera? That is a mature and reliable solution. The answer for not doing that is that there are already many good camera projects around the Pi and I don't think I can do better. Secondly, why use CCD instead of CMOS? Well, let's say, I started this project before the recent CCD camera hype, so that's not the reason. Part of me just wanted to be special, and full-frame CCD is kind of special. The next question is, why don't you make it into a digital back for SRR cameras, so that I don't need to worry about live view anymore, and also the power consumption could be much lower? That's a very good question. The project was initially indeed about building a digital back, but that turns out to be quite challenging as well. One is that there aren't much space to work with inside of an SRR camera. A modern CMOS sensor with less external components and lower power consumption would be a better fit. Another issue is that there is a small gap between the top of sensor glass and the focal plane. One would have to either grind down the camera itself or use a smaller sensor so it fits into the body opening to keep the flange distance constant. The back also need to be synchronized to the original SRR for shutter release. Finally, everything need to be somehow properly mounted onto the original camera. Of course, these are all solvable problems. But just to make my life easier, I decide to make it into a mirrorless camera. Of course, this camera is completely open source. I've been using Git to do version control, and you can even go back in time and look at old versions of the design. Let's do it together and take a look at how this project get to where it's now. The first version was designed in 2017. Back then, I had very little knowledge or experience on designing anything, so it essentially didn't work. Fast forward to 2020, I bought some KI 11000 sensors, so I figured it was time to restart the project. The main focus was just getting it to work, and it did work. It responds to light and captures something. 
but as the project stretched longer, I gradually lost the interest. I wanted to just make it into a camera and call the project finished. Well, I did make the camera, that's in the last video, but somehow the video got so popular that I feel like I cannot let that non-functional thing being become the final version. As a result, almost everything has changed. The new design has much improved grip, more steady chassis, much brighter screen, a overall smaller footprint down from 4 inch to 3.4 inch, more traditional button and control dial, etc. The overall circuit design had seen some improvements as well, but I have to say it's far from being good. There are still a lot of work to be done. So you can expect a part 3 of this video as well, probably a year from now. This is about the end of this video. Hit the like and subscribe if you wish, and thanks for watching.